Hello, everybody, and welcome to Module 6 of Inclusion of Students with Special Needs. Today is November 17th, so we are within just a few weeks of December, and in one month, this class will officially be over for one day. Ends on December 16th. So, uh, a few anecdotes here to start out. First of all, um, the beaver moon, or the very large moon everybody was talking about um, that was happening, I believe, Saturday and, and Sunday. Get out, make sure you see it. Uh, I went out running both of those nights between 11 and 12, and the moon was bright, but it wasn't any bigger than a typical full moon. So apparently you had to be out at either when it was rising or, or right before dawn. I don't know. I didn't, to me, it was a regular moon, so... Kind of missed out on it. I wasn't the only one, though. There was another person uh, with a telescope that I passed uh, on my way down uh, to the track who was checking out the moon, and, and I said something like, yeah, I expected it to be larger. The guy was like, yeah, yeah, me too. So, I don't know. Uh, but another 24 years, we get to be equally disappointed when it returns. Um, nonetheless, a beautiful night to run with a little extra moonlight. Um, I place an order on Amazon uh, for a few things, and I always get a kick out of the preparing to ship status um, because I have had something now that's been preparing to ship for about a week, and um, I'm not sure exactly what, what's going on with the preparing. I imagine Amazon is, is meeting with the package and saying, listen, like you're not going to be here anymore. We're sending you off. It's a good home. But uh, you're going to have a lot of journeys on the way. Just want to prepare you for shipping. So apparently that's not taking place yet. So it is a uh, Toro Leaf Vac. And uh, I can't remember what the other thing is at this point. Yes. So, um, oh, a high pressure bike uh, tire pump for my my kind of racing bike. So yeah, yeah. So it'll be interesting. Hopefully those things are getting psyched up. They're getting prepared to ship and then ship, be free, go arrive at my house. So I can use, use you, help me clean my leaves out of my yard and get my bike tires ready to go. Um, I was checking my, my Google stats. Um, I've had an AdSense account, which is the monetization of some videos. I don't monetize the videos f that I use for teaching, but um, I've I've had the account, you know, maybe like seven, eight years, and I'm up to $20.93. You have to have 100 before you get paid out, and it looks like I gained five cents for uh, the month of November so far, so uh, I don't, it's, it's funny because, I mean, the, the day if it hits 100 and I'm still alive, I mean, that, I'm, I'm taking that $100, and I'm going to go out and get the best quality meal I can at the time, adjusted for inflation, which is probably going to be a value basket at uh, Culver's. But whatever it is, if it hits, or else I'm going to leave it in my will, someone's going to inherit that. One of my, or my daughters will, will split that at some point in the future, that, that $100 check that might arrive in 30 years. Uh, I looked in my stats, and I'm up to 1% uh, for being viewed in Slovakia. So all of my advertising in Slovakia is paying off. I'm up to 1%. Um, still dominated, you know, with uh, hits here from the United States. But uh, yes, to my Slovan friends, thank you very much. I appreciate it, 1%. Um, and... I want to just make a few updates here. One is I'm going to be updating the gradebook soon, probably over the weekend. I'll make a post saying gradebook's been updated. Um, make sure you're making the post. I looked today, and there's still some people that have not made their demonstrating knowledge um, thread post, which was due on uh, November 15th. So today's the 17th, if you don't have it up yet. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I, it just needs to those posts need to be made. So go in and make sure that you're getting your remaining posts done. And 
you know, class does start to wind down now as we get into our, our last module. But again, I noticed a few of you haven't made that um, post that was required on November 15th. So make sure you get in and make that because you don't want that to end up as a zero in the, in the grade book. Um, I do have shout outs for everybody. So uh, first of all, before the shout outs, I wore this to work today because um, my office in the hallways and stuff were like really cool yesterday. But for some reason, I was the one person that didn't get the memo. It was going to be like over 70 degrees and beautiful today. So I'm wore, you know, and there's no going back once you commit to the heavy shirt here with nothing underneath it. So, um, yes, crucial, crucial um, air in uh, choosing this wardrobe for today. So um, I'm going to go for polo tomorrow, even though it's going to be a little cooler. And then, of course, the weekend in the 30s. Uh, that makes it kind of easy, but yes, yes, I missed out. Should have been a polo day. Um, so, shout outs. Uh, Caitlin, let's start with you. I watched your Powtoon cartoon, and I need to make a note here to, thanks for giving me the permission to use it with other students. I need to, to make a note da, 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 to record that off the screen. Um, so I can keep it, and I, I, I liked it. Um, I put down, you know, it was a minute 33, and I'm thinking to myself, there was so much that you put into that in a minute 33 of just, like, valuable content. It was fun. It was just quirky and, and fun to watch, you know? And if I'm at a staff meeting and you're presenting this to me as another staff member, I'm engaged in that, and I'm willing to have a follow-up discussion, you know, five, eight minutes about what, you know, what we talked about, that universal design for learning uh, Powtoon cartoon that you produce. I also think, you know, what if students produce something like that, you know, about um, inclusion, what it means to them, or what, you know, a classroom community means to them, and what it means to be a good friend, and things like that. So, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of ways you can use that to promote inclusion, not only from an instructor standpoint, but to empower students to do that. But uh, I really, I really liked it. Um, one of your, one of the sections had when providing multiple means for action. So as you see me looking over here, I'm looking at the notes I took for our fireside chat. Too. So it's like, why is Dave looking off to the side? No, that's why. So, um, when providing multiple means for action and expression. I was thinking right there's an opportunity to also stress, including exemplars, uh, you know, the actual tangible samples, whether it be a written sample, whether it be they listen to a, a presentation that a student gave, like a station teaching type thing, um, you know, whether it's a physical, a diorama type thing, I mean, whatever. But right there's another opportunity, I think, to put a, a line or to put a little bullet point underneath of saying exemplars, you know, and then boop, 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 some examples or some photos of things, because I think it brings such a context to things then when people, when students do that, it also helps your students with self-evaluation of looking at this and, and, and having some kind of rubric to go with it, looking at their own work and saying, okay, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not meeting all of these, these things, or, hey, I'm doing, I, my work is meeting all of these things, or ask another student, um, what, what do you think of my, my project? Is it, is it meeting the expectations? And so just something to put in there. I'm, I'm adding that it's nothing you missed. It's something you, that your, your cartoon, uh, kind of inspired me to, to add in, um, as a comment right now. So nice, nice job. I enjoyed it. Um, Mark, uh, I, I had a smile when you, you said you attempted a screen chomp, a story bird, a make belief comic, voice thread, and others, and uh, did find any of those really to be, um, you know, to suit you for a presentation. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm kind of the same way. Like, I've tried a lot of things, and, and said some of them have worked, uh, and others don't. <laughs> and that's okay. But, what I like about that, though, uh, that you included that is, hey, you tried it. You know, you tried it. So good. That's what we want students to do. And I think we want students to know that teachers try things, too. And, yeah, it might work. It might not work. Not that it didn't work. Maybe it just it wasn't a fit. It's not the way you wanted to convey your message. So you wanted to use something else. 
Um, I thought it was interesting where you, you had an instructor tell you that the Prezi was overwhelming, or it could be overwhelming to an audience. But then I thought, I've seen some Prezi's um, where people load like way, way, way too much text onto each little bubble, and then they race around too fast in the Prezi. So it's like almost like in a tilt the world, and it's like, whoa, here's this, and then you spin around, and then this comes out, and this. Now, yours wasn't like that. You did a really nice, nice job, nice Prezi. Um, but I have seen Prezi's that, that kind of turn into this content animal, like this, con this content octopus that, that just goes wild. <laughs> you know, it's like fed, uh, you know, this pure Mountain Dew, just like this. But instead of 20 liters, imagine 20,000 liters, and that octopus is just wired, and it's throwing content at you. So um, I, I, I liked your Prezi. Um, and... Dun, 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 dun. You know well, what mark kind of ends right there, but uh, well done, well done. And Brenda Live Binder, I wasn't familiar, didn't know what it was, and I I like the feel of Live Binder. I felt it was visually clean, although there was a lot of information. It didn't seem overwhelming. It seemed very well organized. Um, I felt if the information wasn't up on the screen, I could make one click and there it was. So I liked the layout and I think it's a very good method for conveying information to others. Storing information for yourself, but also professional development for others. It just was packaged really well. Um, and I've seen things like Google Sites which I actually looked at a Google site today where someone was putting something together similar to what, it, it's not a student, it was, it was a coworker. And they were, they were a little frustrated because it was starting to get to be very kind of cumbersome and a lot of, you know, a lot of content on it. And then, you know, the, the print gets kind of small. And, um, and I, I mentioned, I'm like, you know, there's something called live binder you should look at. But at that point, the person was so vested into, what they had done on Google site. There really was no going back at that point, but they did, they did write it down. They're like live binder. Yes. And this is a person who will definitely look into it. Um, so uh, I, I appreciate that you, that you use that first time I had ever seen it. It was very well put together. Uh, Joe, your podcast attempt. So uh, the Joe show, a cup of, cup of, uh, cup of Joe, cup with Joe. Um, if I might have to, I can't log in through a different thing here, but um, dun, dun, dun. Joe, I did. All right. I'm going to sing along um, somewhere over the rainbow. I don't know the rest of the names or how that song goes. It was a good movie. And it was pretty awesome, too. I'm typing in a YouTube search to see if I really did watch Joe's video. I think I did, but I'm not quite sure. I know I watched somebody's video. Scrolling. Na, 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 na. Here's a video about the Titanic. Okay, why do I only have history for a couple days? This doesn't make sense at all. All right, Joe. Um, I, I don't... What, this, search history. Search history. All right. I'm going to put Joe in. Sorry. Um, all right. This is, you know, to... to uh, I don't, it's not coming up here, buddy. All right. Did I watch your, wait a second, wait a second. It's got something else here, buddy. Let's give this a try. All right. I have multiple channels I've created now on YouTube. Ah, Joe. Bada bing, bada boom. Got it. Um, I'm sorry I was giving you a hard time about that link not working. I, I watched your YouTube video, so 
I was thinking what you posted was like a separate podcast thing. So if it was, it was. I couldn't view the podcast. I I totally viewed and commented on your five minute U, UDL response video on YouTube with the Aretha Franklin record in the back. So um, nice, nice. Nice job. It was, it was cool. It was well done. Um, and I could tell, you know, you enjoyed doing it. So um, if you, that podcast, anyway, I, I use a thing called SoundCloud, um, which which I, I tend to like um, for podcasting. But to be honest, I mean, in, uh, if you put anything on YouTube, it takes a minute for someone to go in and, and, and go online and type in, you know, YouTube to MP3 con free converter and, you know, a hundred of them come up and I, I burn things off of YouTube all the time onto MP3 and then I put it on my MP3 player, listen to it in the car. So um, anyway, I'm just, I'm just saying if you have a podcast on YouTube, it's not necessary to, to go through that work to put something up on SoundCloud or whatever, just as an audio format. If someone really wants to follow you, wants to follow your message, they'll, they'll, um, they'll do that on their own. So, but Joe, Joe did the, uh, did the YouTube video. Um, and I, of UDL re response, uh, I, I appreciate that you did that. I've been urging people to, to kind of get out of their comfort zone, which a lot of people did, um, during this module, but I, I, I really like that. So, um, and I, 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 you know, encourage everybody to, to keep doing that. Look at the five minutes uh, that, that Joe put together. And, uh, yeah, so I, I appreciate it. Um, how many of you right now are thinking, I'm going to take that clip where Dave was singing. I'm going to edit that clip out. I'm going to send it to Simon Cowell. I'm just going to say, next time there's like an America's Got Talent or some show like that, call this guy up. So, um, Seaver, uh, Seaver, your, your tree stand photo, uh, I, I just, I get a kick out of that because it brings me back, uh, to my brother who uh, lives in Tomahawk and teaches uh, in the Tomahawk school district. And he has a, uh, first of all, he's a deer hunter, but he has a, a stand at the back of his, um, cabin, which is on Lake Tomahawk. So. You know, you walk about 300 feet and then up in a tree, there's this stand. And he, and he goes up there he, and um, he's got a little kind of top over it. Um, but he'll bring his laptop and he, can, he still gets wireless or whatever that far away. I mean, he works out there when the weather's nice. So it's kind of his like getaway. And, just, and he hangs out, reads, does other things. And it's it's not for hunting, that, that one. But... Uh, I did share the story, though, true story. So back in the 1990s, uh, my brother and I and uh, my, my brother's friend, we went to every home Green Bay Packers game except, I think, three for 10 years, including playoffs. Um, so it was wild. And um, my brother was hunting at his friend's land, the guy that, that we got the tickets from to go to the game. And uh, my brother fell out of his tree stand. And he was okay. I mean, banged up a little bit, but somehow managed to fall out of the tree stand. And then he looks up and the gun is coming down and the butt of the gun, boom, right in the forehead. Or, you know, hits him. Gun doesn't discharge or anything, but leaves this, this complete butt of the gun mark. <laughs> so, yes, he had that for a long time. No stitches, no nothing, just his big welt. So um, we kid him about that. Um, but uh, I, there's a couple things I wanted to expand upon. One is you, you have a close connection with nature, as, as I think virtually everybody does in this class. But what you, the fact that you showed that picture from the Deerson, I think conveying to students the importance to make a connection with the outdoors. Um, and even... I mean, imagine if one of your students were to write outdoors. I mean, not write in a deer stand necessarily, but write at a park or, or something, you know, like that. Um, do, do some things, um, even some observational things of, you know, um, what, what do you see, you know, when you're walking through a park or a trail or something like that. But um, 
I, I've seen all of these goofy things like we can take a virtual field trip to, you know, the forest. I'm like, well, you know, why am, don't take a virtual field trip to the forest? I mean, if you need to do it as a prep for here's what the forest is kind of going to be like and here's the clothes you're going to need to to wear and some things like that. I mean, I guess that's one thing. But like if this is your field trip, like we're all going to sit in our desk. We're going to pull a smart board out and guess what? We're going to the forest today. And here's a pine cone. Pass it around. Make sure it comes back because last time it didn't. So, um, you know, that's ridiculous. And then you also, that's an opportunity for self-reflection, you know, to be, I'm telling you, you know this, everybody knows this, but teaching kids self-reflection and time in nature. The Turbo a few years ago had somebody come in and present, I, I might probably talk about this, but um, they had somebody present about um, the connection of nature and how important that was for everybody. And it was a featured uh, presenter. Viterbo does that on a regular basis. We'll bring people in to give scholarly presentations uh, in their beautiful performing arts center. And I, I'll never forget that. I, I, I was there for that one. So um, just saying how our, our bodies from a metabolism, from a biochemical standpoint, change after 30 minutes outdoors or like walking through a woods or something like that. Um, and, and what your brain waves look like, but um, always, and you you mentioned it, and, and always, you know, whenever you can, keep kids connected to the outdoors and to to nature, and to use opportunities for self reflection, because you can self reflect, you know, when you're out there, right? not if you're necessarily on your laptop, buddy, you know. So, but just places to self reflect where you don't have all of that noise, all that stimuli going on. So. Um, and yeah, I didn't, I didn't know you could get a ticket for, for working on your laptop in your deer stand. So you better, better watch, better watch out. So, um, go get, get a huge like order of Jack Link's beef jerky, uh, for, or go up to Minong. And if you do let me know, because I'll send money with you to pick me up a, they, we went there this summer on our way to Superior and they have the bags of, of the pieces of jerky which don't make the cut you know they're, they don't come out the right size or whatever but they still taste fine and you can get like a sack of these things you know that would if you bought it retail it cost you like a hundred bucks it cost you like 20 and, and so i mean it was paradise to load up on these things now of course you know you're, you're increasing your sodium intake by like five thousand percent you know by doing that but um i guess what i'm getting at is you know just make it look like it's a Jack Link's beef jerky box or pizza box or something like that. Warden will leave you alone. Um, Daniel, your UDL video. I, I'm going to go back to a statement that I, I copied out of your, your uh, video when I made my response. Emphasis on variability over disability that it, it just resonates with me. I've thought about it. Um, and it's a really powerful statement. And it's probably the best way I've had somebody put a ring to, you know, to UDL. Hey, you know, it's, uh, you're emphasizing variability over disability. Got it. Um, I, so, Something today I spoke with um, with ISS twenty four seven with Scott, uh, one of their their vice presidents. ISS twenty four seven is a company out of out of Florida, and they specialize in large venue safety, and um, they're, they're the number one in the country. So that they work with the NFL, and when you when you go to a game and you see the number or a camp Randall or something, you know the the text, you know this this number if there's you know, a rowdy fan or medical emergency or whatever is in your area. That's their company. So we were talking because I'm I'm incorporating uh, some ISS 24/7's um, theoretical philosophies into a book that I'm writing. And what what um, excuse me, uh, what Scott was sharing is I said what what's an obstacle to um, people using your system and. He said, you know, oddly enough, it's when we have a venue um, and, and an usher uh, and particularly 
you know, like a, an older person um, serving as an usher that might not be familiar with the, the technology and not familiar with how to use apps. And, and they get put into the role of, of an usher. Uh, maybe, you know, there's something game day, something changes, whatever, but um, it's not native to them and to to have the software. So they, they've really made it icon based to try to make it more universally accessible. And, and that's helped. But again, of course, um, I'm thinking of that, and then I'm kind of ch changing the thoughts in my mind of saying, you know what, you know, like reporting software, and this isn't what ISS 24-7 um, does. They don't do the reporting software for school. But um, companies that do that, to go more um, color-based, more icon-based, uh, it just makes sense um, to do that. And yet a lot of them are very heavy, heavy, heavy text-based, um, almost to the point like a bully if you're reporting a bully claim, for example, um, a, a lot of systems have where the person doing the reporting, like the student, has to complete one or two pages and they have to give details. Um, and really, that's the student shouldn't be the investigator. To make that language rich is, is not inclusive because you have a lot of students who don't have the vernacular to, to produce that. Um, you know, they, they might have, um, you know, a reading or writing disability, English language learner. I mean, it's one of those things where it's like a fire alarm. If you pull a fire alarm, you know, there's a fire and then there's a response that needs to happen to that. It's one thing if you pull a fire alarm and then there's a screen that pops up and it says, okay, like, uh, why did you pull the fire alarm? Like, um, what kind of fire is it? Like, how big is it? Uh, you know, have you tried to, I mean, like all of these things. I mean, and that's kind of like what bully forms do. Like, do, you, do you know, like who started the fire? It's like, no, hey, there's a fire. Get out of the building, you know? So I'm, what I'm getting at is, is your video does a really nice job in, I think, by taking variability of making it very relatable to everybody um, when you talk about UDL. It's just it becomes relatable once you, you use that word. So... Uh, Brent, your UDL videos, uh, students teaching students, um, William Burke, really, really liked it, really liked it. My observation uh, was with team-based ass assignments, T-E-A-M-based assignments, I, I might have sounded like, it might sound like team, but team, um, is I, I've seen students struggle more with team assignments than in the past. And... Um, I'm working with a student right now, high school student, um, that is taking some college classes and she is indicating uh, her team isn't very functional um, because what's happening is everybody, first of all, the division of labor is, is hard because it's like, what, how do they divide up the assignments so it's equitable and, and do that? And the other one is, it's basically a representation of like four different opinions that then they just try to, to mash together into this one synthesized paper that's supposed to represent the group instead of having, you know, let's all work together on what our message is going to be and whatever. Um, it's basically just taping these four things together and saying, here's a paper. So four like individual assignments put together and here it is. A couple ands, a couple hyphens, a couple things like that. Um, but it is, it's hard. And, and I was thinking about, you know, why, why might that be happening? And, and I'm thinking about the K-12 classroom. I'm thinking about inclusion and the benefits of having students team because teaching another student and demonstrating learning and being able to ask questions and have discussions and get feedback and have empathy and, and take others' opinions and at least recognize the opinions. You can use them to change your opinion or not, you know, but recognizing those. But I was thinking, why, why is this kind of becoming more of a struggle? Because I, I don't think it was as much of a struggle, even just a few years ago. And I'm wondering if it's because we, we tend to put so much stress on students for their individual performance and their individual grades, and eventually into class rank and all of these things that for the student, I mean, I'm, I'm venturing a guess here. Does it become risky? Does it become risky to default some of your... I don't know, power or control over that assignment to others. And knowing that there's a chance that group project isn't going to be, um, I don't know, quote unquote, as good as if you had done it yourself. Just the perception. Is that what we're 
kind of conveying to students is, you know, to kind of protect your yourself academically. I, I don't know. I, I struggle with that a little bit because I, I'm seeing that. I've seen it in other settings too. And we can't lose that. We can't lose that teaming and that ability to have some vulnerability in putting your idea out there and having someone else have a counter idea. Um, people take that as criticism. And it's, uh, and I've, and I've seen students do that too, take that very critical. And, and it's like, and I, I'll be, I'll be right there and be like, whoa, whoa, that wasn't, that person wasn't critical of you at all. Uh, you're taking the, you're perceiving this wrong. This was just an idea of this person. Just like when you had this, this comment, you're just putting ideas out there. So interesting stuff though. Um, Anthony. Your observations about block scheduling and the 77-minute classes, where you said uh, that was a, in your your perception a more positive model because students had more time to work on something without um, you know interruptions from bells and so forth. Uh, more common planning time, huge, huge for inclusion. Yes, common planning time. That's a big benefit of a block schedule. Um, when I was in, and in, in block schedule is a huge paradigm shift. To get people to buy into a block schedule is very challenging. Um, it takes time. And you have to tell people up front, like the, the first semester might be choppy. And usually it's not. Usually it works out a lot better than anybody thinks. I mean, that break-in phase. But um, when I was in school, when I was in high school, we had nine, the nine-period day. So, I mean, you were unpacking your books, getting out, getting a little bit of instruction, and boom, you know, you had to pack up, belt rang, you're out. And that really, uh, you know, you, you could never go very deep into classes. And especially for examinations, I mean, I had some exams where, I mean, they would go over, you know, they'd go over two classes, if not three, just because the classes weren't that long. Some days we had early release. So then, I mean, you literally get in. I don't even know if you open the backpack up. You know, take the pencil from behind your ear and a notepad, and that's it because, I mean, it's just so short. So I think um, that's the block scheduling, as you indicated, is a, is a fundamental um, piece of, of inclusion. So thanks for your observations on that. Uh, I did post, um, I'm wrapping up here, I see 32 minutes. Uh, I did post. I started a safety school safety uh, podcast. I'm going to keep going every week. Um, I'm going to uh, post today or tomorrow, and it okay. It's it's something I put out there. Some of you might have an interest in following. I do have a format, which will always be a little bit of an anecdote for me. It'll be something, um, some facts, kind of more obscure facts about school safety or safety in general has some really interesting stuff about memory and how much we we really remember and how kind of quickly memory degrades um and and then i have a, uh, a headline i do get headlines every day that programmed in from uh various school safety incidents events and i have a headline from australia which is mind-blowing mind-blowing uh and then i wrap it up after that so it's something if you're interested, you can subscribe. If not, that's fine. Don't worry about it. But I did put it out there because one, one thing people will tell me is that they, they really don't learn a lot about school safety in any of their courses. And even when they get to the schools, um, it's kind of limited. So this is something I am doing on a regular basis, and I think it's very relevant information. And it's, it's empirical. Um, so, you know, that that's that's the value of, of what I have to offer. So I did have four subscribers on SoundCloud just from my very first one and 60 views on uh, YouTube and no comments and no subscribers, but hey, we're starting out and I think that's pretty good. Um, we have module seven now, which will run um, through the end of class, which is December 16th. And you have your Bill Porter plan as your capstone project. That's your big project for this course. So if you if you do have a portfolio affiliated with this course, if you do, not everybody does, or maybe none of you do, but um, you would know that. That's being in the program. But uh, this is it. This is your big assignment. This is the one. You can turn it in early. That's fine. But do not submit anything to me after December 16th. Um, I need to get 
your assignments graded and back to you in final grades into the turbo like the 17th. I mean, it needs to happen. There's no window that I have. Um, so you need to get that assignment into me and make sure that that assignment is in by, again, I think it's December 16th, whatever the, the, the day is on it. Um, because, I, I mean, it's you're not going to be giving extensions or anything like that. I mean, it's... <laughs> It's got to be in. It's got to be in, and I'm just saying that. I, I, my, I am, I am really up against the wall when it comes to that turnaround time. Uh, love the university, but of course, uh, it's they just need to turn around, you know, so they get their grades, get everything to register, get everything posted before they go to winter break. And also for you, um, you know that that is reported and in the books for you, and for some of you um, who are teaching right now. I know you do get um, some level sometimes of reimbursement or something like that if you have your courses, you know, once you submit your transcripts. So I'm always making sure that I, I get that done. Um, but uh, just make sure you start planning for your Bill Porter plan because it's, you know, we're a week from now we're at Thanksgiving and then it's going to, time's going to really start to condense, condense down pretty fast. So, um, if you didn't uh, hit the uh, that that be beaver moon, uh, I don't think you missed anything. Um, if you know anyone in Slovakia, send the good word here on my podcast, up to 1% overall. But uh, appreciate it. This will probably be the last fireside chat. I don't know if I'll do anything for, for the very end of class or not. We'll, we'll see how things go on that. But, um, again, uh, shout-outs. You've done a really nice job. Thank you for listening. Um, to my encourage my encouragement to go out and diversify, you know, like Joe making you know the the YouTube video and um, Caitlin with um, with Powtoons and Mark, I would like the Prezi, come on. So um, I n nice job. Make sure you're getting your stuff in. Again, there's a, there's some stuff that's missing, folks, and if it shows up as zeros in your grade book when I post that. Um, you don't want you don't want your grades to drop down like that. I mean, you don't want to come out of this this class with a B or or lower. You know, when you when you could have or should have had an A. So get in there and and uh, get that taken care of if you're one of the people that hasn't done that yet. So um, take care, stay warm over the weekend. Um, I am. It's, I have this strand of, a uh, uh, 50 foot strand of rope light. It's red. Well, part of it's red and dead right now. I might have to replace it. But it's one of these things where in, when I take it off, like in April, you know, finally I'll take it off on a day when it's 65. And it's so nice because it's bendable and all of that. As soon as it drops below like 30 degrees, like is basically trying to bend an iron rod around this this maple tree in the front. So every time I'm out there with my white knuckle, you know, trying to get this thing around this, this tree and bend it, I'm like, why didn't I do this like two weeks ago? So, um, yeah. So imagine, so on Wednesday somewhere, you're going to hear an echo. It's going to be, why didn't I do this two weeks ago? So that echoes me because I'm going to be, be saying that from up in a tree. So, um, all right. Thank you so much for your posts, for your contributions. Um, have a safe uh, Thanksgiving, uh, safe travels to you. And I look forward to the Bill Porter plans as they, as they start to come in. Email me with any questions. Um, again, thank you very much.